And again, it, it's using context, so it immediately recognizes it's a Windows Mobile device and kind of gives you the most common tasks that you may want to do with it. Um, it's no longer this really nebulous thing to sync music with your device because it has this sync digital music files here and it will go into Windows Media Player 11 and automatically set up the partnership to synchronize music. Second one, of course, is uh, the open device to actually view files and then we can import pictures uh, using the, the, video, uh, the, the photo gallery or whatever, the, um, the Windows photo gallery, that's it. So uh, the cool thing here is that this is built into every single Vista machine. And so the idea is that if I take some photos with my, you know, with my uh, Windows mobile device and I go over to a friend's house or something like that, I don't have to install ActiveSync, I don't have to do anything funky to get those photos or those files off the device. Quite literally, someone could click open device to view files and it comes up, it's recognized just like it's a memory stick or something like that. So this is the experience you get for other music players. That's right. For, for, for cameras and things like that. Exactly. Any sort of detachable media. So. Exactly. So that's experience that you get out of the box. Now what happens is once I've connected this in a shipping Windows product or Windows Vista product, uh, it actually puts a little flag in the Windows update. It says, hey, you know, this, this person, Chancellor, has a Windows mobile device, so why don't we get the, the other experience? And so on the next Windows update, if it's set for automatic updates, it, go ahead, it actually downloads this application here, which is the Windows mobile device center, which you guys have seen uh, probably in screenshots before. And so immediately, uh, it asks you what you would like to do with your device. And again, uh, ActiveSync won't actually install on top of Windows Vista. This is uh, meant to be the replacement for ActiveSync. I have the option to set up a device, and I can go ahead and click on that. That should be a presentation mode, shouldn't I? Um, so I can go ahead and, and pick kind of all the usual things uh, that I would expect to synchronize, mobile favorites, notes, that sort of thing. I can set this up. I have the option to set up my Exchange server right here. This is actually a, a great, great feature for customers that are, you know, doing lengthy email setup, right? It's, it's kind of a pain in the neck to type in on a little 12-digit keypad. Being able to do it right from here and having that information, you know, passed down through the cable is, is really a step forward. And by the way, this isn't just for cable. This is also Bluetooth. Uh, the setup there has gotten a lot more user-friendly. Uh, just go ahead. It just actually detects it. So that works really well, too. I can skip this if I don't want to to deal with that. And then also I can set my device name here. And this is something that uh, you couldn't actually do on a smartphone. It would kind of give you this weird default device name that was somehow loosely based off your computer name. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, and you would take a registry hack to, to, to make any change to that. But you can actually set that up here. And this is you know very much like you would expect from your iPod. So it's a dark sliders, uh, HTC or something like that. So I can go ahead and choose to set up. But since I want to show you what the alternative, what the quick setup is like, I'll actually cancel this now. So this, by default, takes me into the quick setup, which, if for ActiveSync fans, uh, is basically guest mode, guest, uh, guest setup. Are there any ActiveSync fans here? <laughs> no one's a fan of ActiveSync, great. Uh, so this is, uh, first, the first thing you'll notice here, this first pane, is programs and services. Now this is going to be populated with a lot of uh, content from, uh, basically, our partner. So you'll probably see a way to add applications and services, Handango, um, Otricity, which is Pocket Gear and Cellmania, uh, or I'm sorry, Pocket Gear and Smartphone.net, and then Cellmania is the third one. Uh, again, this will all work out to who the operators are close to. And the way that this information comes down is there's actually an XML sheet uh, on each device. And that XML sheet is going to tell it what kind of device it is, what the operator is, and what these settings are going to be. So that every different, for every device that you plug in, you'll get a customized experience. So instead of this generic image, this will actually be a 3D rendering of an HCC Hermes or something like that. And you can have the operator brand in as well. So again, it's on the device side, so it doesn't really have to go out to the web for this resource. It's pulling it all from the device. The device actually knows what it is. And the cool thing about that, by extension, is that when you're going to get these programs and services and you're looking at details and offers from Handango, it's showing you applications that are going to be compatible with your device because they now have that context. So it makes it, again, easier for the kind of you know, mainstream user to understand what it is to, to expose applications and put them on the device. We can't, can't share names yet, but there are um, right now two operators that look like at least trying to get by the time we do Vista to actually have specific services that are plugged in here. Because this is this is open, there's an SDK or it's pluggable, so someone can put different things in there. So you could go and I don't know, maybe change a rate plan and buy something through the operator right here on your PC. Yeah. And then there's options to bill on behalf of as well, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. If the, if the information on the devices it work for current devices as well? I mean, existing devices are already at work. So for existing devices, it actually just knows whether it's a pocket PC or a smartphone. And I'll actually show you what it actually knows. Uh, and this is another cool feature. I can go into my computer now. 
It knows whether it's a pocket PC or smartphone, and I can actually get properties on that, and I can check basically the asset tag of the device, so I can get, oops, I did a Windows property. And you notice import pictures is an option there too, so it's, it's very, very easy from, from any <coughs> UI. So it notice, first of all, that it's actually giving me the power status of the device, which is cool, metadata to have, but it's also showing me the version and the serial number of the device. So that, that's kind of the non-Vista optimized device that you still get that baseline of information, whether it's a smartphone or PC. And again, that's why it's giving me this kind of generic pocket PC image. But in the future, all the devices, it'll be a requirement to have this XML sheet on it, so it'll be a highly customized experience. Uh, and probably the next movies will be able to show you what that looks like. For future devices. You already know what that is. Not backdate. I mean, it won't pull from, you know, like the Axmex 5. So it will, again, show a generic, generic. pocket PC image. You'll be able to get the battery status. It'll show you the version of Windows Mobile on it. But that's about it. So, again, you know, we, we didn't really lay the groundwork <laughs> for this until a couple months ago. Or about Does it sell update? Does it self-update? So the Windows Mobile Device Center? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yes. It'll, it'll, it's a component. Uh, it's part of Windows Update, so it yeah. constantly get updates. And that's actually how it's pulled down to begin. With. Part of the OS. So the other cool thing is that uh, you can go into pictures, music, and video, and it actually detects what pictures are new. Now this has always been a fun game to play: is uh, figure out which pictures are already on your hard drive versus what's on your device. And and this actually detects that I've taken 17 new pictures. And I can start to tag those. Uh, so instead of having the pictures called DSC0919.jpg, which is a compelling name, I can, uh, I can set this up as Mobius Boston. And it tags those all accordingly in the file name and in the metadata. Pulls them in instantly. You'll notice there's USB 2.0 support. That's why it's pointed in so fast. And then it actually opens them up in the uh, Windows uh, photo gallery as well. And it'll take a second to think, because this is just a, a little data here. I can start. Um, Getting, you'll notice the beautiful Windows default pictures, uh, and then some of the photos that I took from earlier today will start coming up as well. And you notice two megapixels, that's really not a bad picture either from the, from the early. So, that fix my um, <laughs> so, yes, so that's great. Uh, again, file management is an option here. Videos can synchronize as well, just the way I showed you. You can change your import settings so that every time you connect the device, it will always grab the new pictures and always put them in a given folder or something like that. So, if that's your particular cup of tea. Do the file management from here as well, and you can set up uh, kind of all your, your settings again. And this is mostly for folks that have already gone through the full setup process. So uh, I'm happy to report, too, that pass-through, all that works just as well. So I can actually uh, do a pass-through active sync style connection on the device. I can get to the internet. All those things uh, have not broken. Uh, but again, this is, this is the next version. This is kind of what we're looking to after active sync in the Vista time frame. Hopefully it does. Uh, some, some new cool things, or hopefully you think that they're new and cool enough to, to really make it a good successor to active sync. So, I don't know, some thoughts? Yeah. I'm going to ask the question that uh, you probably don't want to hear. What about uh, wireless syncing? So, wireless sync. So, there is not uh, Wi Fi. No, okay. it, it, is, it was a security hazard, and that's why we took it out. Uh, but there is Bluetooth, which, you know, more and more of the computers are going to have Bluetooth. Uh, no, Chris, I'm going to ask the question that you don't want to hear. <laughs> um, Max support. Max support. So, is there ever. Is there so more than likely, and this is something again,